I've been taking a look at some of the games announced at E3 with some footage shown off, and Stalker 2 kind of piqued my interest. I am liking the setting, the gameplay looks fun. I haven't actually played the first game and don't really know much about it, so hey, maybe I'm completely wrong, but this game looked interesting to me. And the graphics looked pretty sharp in the, in the uh, trailer here. So I was wondering, with games that are being developed a little further into the next-gen console life cycle, this game's not coming out for another year or so from the time of filming this in 2020, I'm filming in 2021, the game's launching in 2022, I'm wondering where are PC system requirements gonna be at for games more along uh, this generation um, coming, you know, like I said, further along the line? Well, a lot of games that get announced uh, early on don't release system requirements, but I popped over to the Steam page and I was very happy to see they have a minimum and recommended system requirement. Now, before you just pause the video, look at this and click away, let me say I'm gonna offer more than just reading through this list. I'm also gonna show you how, uh, and, and give you links in my description, to websites where you can pull up tier lists of GPUs to help you decide how your GPU would compare to these requirements. I'll also give a few thoughts on this. One thing, before we even get into the CPU and GPU, this thing comes in at a whopping 150 gigabytes of available space, recommending it on an SSD, not a hard drive. So, hope you've got yourself a big SSD with a lot of free space. I'm wondering if that's gonna be indicative of newer games in general, or, um, you know, this one's just, just a big one. <laughs> anyway, um, so when we're looking at our system requirements here, I'm also noticing the processors are pretty beefy. And, you know, we're moving to the next gen of consoles with much more powerful processors than in the last gen of consoles, so we might start seeing that. I'm actually a little scared because the recommended one is slightly above what I actually have in my system. Same thing for the GPU, but we'll get to that. Let's start with the minimum requirements. We've got ourselves the AMD Ryzen 1600X or the Intel Core i5 7600K. So it's still i5 and a, and a Ryzen 5, and they're, they're not really new, but you know, uh, a lot of people tend to hang on to their CPUs for a long time. I know people still running like an i5 from the 4000 series. So if you're still back there, just realize you are below the minimum CPU requirements uh, for this game and possibly future upcoming titles. On the uh, um, memory requirement for minimum, we're, uh, we're at eight gigabytes of RAM. For the recommended, we jump up to 16 gigabytes. So keep that in mind. Uh, Cause I also know some people uh, skimping around on that eight gigabytes still. Anyway, uh, on the graphics side, we're seeing the RX 580 and the NVIDIA GTX 1060. Now these are very similar uh, in performance, although not identical in different games and different engines favor one over, uh, over the other. That's just how it goes. Um, but do notice that that minimum card is recommended at six gigabytes. Six gigabytes is a bit more than people who are sneaking in a little bit under these minimum specs. Like maybe you have a uh, GTX 970. Well, that was only a four gigabyte card, although slightly less, and that was a whole controversy years ago that we need to, don't need to get into. But anyway, I'm wondering, I'm wondering about that. Um, if people are gonna be needing a little more VRAM than they, than they used to. Anyway, let's jump up to the uh, recommended requirements and then I'll help you decide if you're not on this list, um, where do you fall on this list? All right, so the processors are a Ryzen 7 3700X and a Core i7 9700K. I have a 9600K, so I'm just slightly under this. And uh, off the top of my head, I don't remember the core count difference, but I do know one main difference is my 9600K is six core, but no hyper threading. So six core, six thread. The 9700K uh, might have more cores and I know it has hyper threading. So I'm wondering if those of us with just six core, six thread might be falling a bit below what's recommended these days in some of these upcoming games. Maybe I have an excuse to upgrade my CPU finally. Anyway, uh, again, the memory jumped up to 16 gigabytes. I'm meeting that. <laughs> and then um, I'm making this video to help you guys, but I'm also processing the information myself, okay? <laughs> anyway, um, and we've also got the Radeon RX 5700 XT, eight gigabyte recommended, along with an RTX 2070 Super, eight gigabyte. And again, these are very similar performing cards. Um, uh, in certain games, one will outperform the other. 
and then the uh, GeForce GTX 1080 Ti 11 gigabyte card. Now I believe this game is also support, uh, supposed to support ray tracing and, and things like that, but I don't think these specs are, are getting into any of, of the recommendations for that. And uh, we'll see where that goes. All right, so um, I'm also gonna link you guys to the site I'm taking you to now, which is Tech Power Up, because if we go here, you can find, uh, I really like they have this relative performance chart of GPUs. Now again, this isn't perfect, but it gives you a pretty close ballpark idea of how different GPUs compare to each other. And if you don't have an encyclopedic knowledge of all the different GPUs and yours wasn't either the minimum or the recommended, you might be curious how close do you fall um, uh, along the line. So I pulled up the Radeon R uh, RX 5700 XT, which was one of the recommended cards. The other recommended card was the RTX 2070 Super. I have an RTX 2070, so if I'm like, ah, oh, mine wasn't on the list, how close am I? Well, I'm at 98% of the 5700 XT. Um, again, the 2070 Super is a little bit further along, uh, but I'm pretty close, so I'm not too worried about those recommended requirements, except for the fact that it's not specifically stating what monitor resolution this is. And unless stated otherwise, I think a lot of games are still talking about 1080p. Uh, in which case I might be running a bit short since I personally run ultra wide 1440p, which is much harder to drive. Anyway, um, so if we look down at, okay, where did the minimum requirements fall relative to the recommended requirements? Well, if we scroll down here, we're looking for the RX 580. That's at roughly 54% of the performance of the recommended 5700 XT. So that's where your performance range falls between the minimum and the recommended, which also makes me wonder is like recommended targeting 60 frames per second and minimums targeting 30 frames per second or where maybe you could back off uh, the settings to the really low if you wanted to get a little better than 30. I don't know. That's just complete speculation on my part. It didn't state it in the, uh, in the requirements thing. Anyway, but so I know a lot of people, like I mentioned, have still are rocking their 970 and can't upgrade right now because at the time of filming GPUs, the market is awful. Anyway, so that's at 49% of the performance of the recommended card, and it's really only falling a little bit behind that 580. Right, It's not super far off in terms of the performance, but the 580 has eight gigabytes of VRAM, and the 970 is at a little bit less than four gigabytes of VRAM. So that's another thing to keep in mind because they didn't outright st state it, but keep that VRAM requirement uh, uh, as, as a possible issue. There's the 1060 six gigabyte, which was the other recommended uh, card on the list. So if you're sitting on like, oh, what's a popular card? Like a GTX 1660, where do you fall? Well, you're at 62% of the recommended requirements, but you are, uh, you know, a decent step up from the minimum requirements. So I'd say you should be safe as long as whatever minimum is targeting is, is settings that you're, you're willing to live with. Uh, if you're still on a 980 Ti, for example, you're at 64%. Now, I don't need to read all of these out, although I will scroll through this a little bit so you can find where your card falls along the list. If you're on like a 2060, for example, you get the idea. Also, if you're like, well, I have a better card than that. How much better than the recommended performance can I be? Well, let's pop up, you know, through, through the list here and you can get, a, again, a rough estimate. So if you're rocking a 3080, you're at almost double the recommended performance, which is great if the recommended performance is only targeting something like 1080p, because if you're trying to play at 1440p or God help you 4K, uh, you know, you get the idea. Anyway. Um, so I don't want to ramble on and on and on. I will have links to everything I talked about in the description to this video. I read all the comments on my channel. I'm curious what you guys think about the, both the system requirements and what it might mean on future titles, as well as what you think about the game, Stalker 2, something you're interested in. Anyway, um, if you're interested in PC tech related content, uh, all of that, feel free to subscribe to the channel. No hard feelings if you don't. And I hope you have an excellent day. Oh, and thank you subscribers, you beautiful people.